What I'm demonstrating today is the complete breakdown of a rotisserie chicken. Uh, this particular rotisserie chicken was purchased at Sam's Club. Uh, I know that there are a lot of club stores that have these as well as your local grocery stores. And I know that this intimidates a lot of people, so I thought that I would uh, kind of show you how it's done, quick and easy. Uh, first thing what I like to do is I like to buy these and uh, when I get home from the grocery store, um, I'll throw them into the refrigerator for, you know, however long, a couple of days or so, uh, and then take them out and I'll throw them in the microwave for about a minute and a half, just enough to warm it back up so that the, the meat and the bones are loose and pliable and everything. Um, but you want to get them into the refrigeration as soon as you get it home from the grocery store because you want it because it is chicken. Chicken is a considered a potentially hazardous ingredient. You want to chill it down to 41 degrees or lower within um, within six hours of getting it home. So anyway, uh, you'll notice that every one of these birds comes with uh, some twine or some elastic holding it all together. And that's the first thing you'll want to do is to remove that elastic twine. And what they do is they wrap it around these two leg joints. And it's, it's <laughs> sometimes it's a wrestle. But usually what I'll do is I'll just uh, take it and cut it on one side. It wraps all the way around the leg uh, and sometimes like this one they've actually tied it uh, underneath the body. So I'll go back in there and uh, cut that and it should just pull right out once you get it to the right position. Come on, don't make a liar out of me. Boy, they really wrap this one up good. This one goes all the way around the wing. so. Again, just kind of wiggle it out. There you go. This one's coming around both wings and it's out. So you'll notice uh, that it's got the black opaque bottom which has lots of juice in it and then the clear top. What I'm gonna do is I am going to put the meat, as I remove the meat, I'm gonna put that into the black container because that still has all the juice. And then I'm gonna put the carcass and the bones into the uh, white container. So let me, uh, I'll put these off to the side uh, they may, you may not see them because they're off camera, but the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to remove the legs. Uh, super easy. You know, if you were doing this with uh, a fresh chicken, it would be a lot harder because you'd have to actually cut through the skin because this is already roasted. We don't have to cut through the skin. But the first thing I will do is I will bend this leg and thigh joint back until I not only hear a pop, but I see this ball and socket joint on the thigh. And I'll kind of pull that out and just separate that and put that on my cutting board. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Again, bend it back until you hear that pop and you see that ball and socket joint come out. Right there, boom, that red spot, that's that ball and socket joint. Um, and I did take a little bit of the back with it, not a big problem. Uh, again, that's one of the reasons why you want to uh, throw it in the microwave, loosen it up a little bit. This one is still a little bit cold, and I will uh, discuss this little piece of meat that comes off the back. It is called the oyster. sits right in here. We'll see it on the other side. But again, bones go into my bone container. Meat goes into the black translucent container. Uh, so now that I've got both of these separated, uh, I'll go ahead and process those, remove all the the meat from those that I can. I'll put my carcass off to the side here for just a second so you can see how this is done. Again, uh, very easy. If you were gonna cut these, uh, in case you wanted to eat these uh, separately later, uh, there is the same um, joint, that ball and socket joint that runs right through there. You can cut it right there and usually these are very easy to separate. But at this point, what I will do is I will separate uh, the thigh from the leg, again, folding it in half until you see that nice ball and socket break. And I'll separate those, do the same thing with the other side. I get that nice ball and socket break. I'll do the thighs first because the thighs are the easiest. We've got one bone running through the thighs. So all I'll do at this point is I will, I don't want the skin, you can keep the skin if you want, but I will remove the skin. And then if you've got it again, if it's warm enough, you'll see that single bone that goes through there. 
because this is all pre-cooked and roasted up real nice, all I'll do is just kind of wiggle that out and, and pull the meat off with my hands until I have a nice clean thigh bone. And that is really all there is to it. Now I'm gonna come back through this and cut the meat into bite-sized pieces, but for right now, I'm just gonna set it into my black tray. Again, same thing with the other side. I'm gonna remove the skin. Dogs are wondering who I'm talking to. There's your thigh. Just like you see it when you buy it raw in the grocery store, it's gonna have a big side, a little fold, then a little side. But again, I'll just grab that boint, that boint, that joint, that bone, twist it out, strip it of any residual meat it has on it. Again, set that right into the, you can tear it apart a little bit. But again, we're gonna come back with a knife and cut through that and make it smaller. Uh, and so now I have both thighs with all the meat taken off of it. Now I'll go ahead and do the legs. Now the legs, one of the things that you want to do is there is a bone, a long, skinny, thin bone. If you've ever eaten a chicken leg, you'll know it's there, but it runs down through the leg and connects to the top and runs straight down. And what I like to do is I like to use my knife at this point and just run it around in a circle so that I sever all of those tendons that connect to the bottom of that leg joint. You'll see that right there, how I take that off. Again, this goes into my scrap pile, but at this point, I simply peel the skin off. Peel it all off, and because I have separated those tendons, now at this point, I can pretty much just pull that out and being careful because I'm still gonna have that long, skinny bone, and there it is. I don't know what the name of this bone is, but it's long and skinny and very sharp, okay? So clean that the best you can by hand. Again, same thing. I'll go around the base of the leg with my knife, severing all those tendons. Probably much more important when you're doing this with raw chicken than with a, a cooked chicken. And peel my skin off. And then just grab the meat and kind of pull it. You'll hear it pop. But again, what I don't want is I don't want that long, thin, pointy, sharp bone. I've got that removed. Uh, I didn't get my long, skinny bone out of here. Uh, so you just go ahead and remove it there by hand. Um, and also I'll take this and clean it. You don't want any of this uh, cartilage where the, where the knuckles come together on that leg, where that leg meets the thigh. You wanna make sure you clean any cartilage out of this mess right here. This is that long, skinny bone. It has like a hammer on the top of it. And then it's long and skinny and sharp. Remove that. And then you should be good to go. Again, just if you, if you don't want skin, if you want skin, take it off at this point. This one, if I remember right, we got that long, skinny bone out. So this is all meat right here. That comes off that other leg. So you can see, look how much dark meat we have just off this rotisserie chicken. We've got a good little batch of uh, dark meat there. And now we'll get ready and to take the breasts off. Much, uh, much easier on a rotisserie chicken. So what you wanna do is, so the breast has two different lobes, the right and left lobe, and it's separated down the middle with a, what they call the keel bone. The keel bone is mostly cartilage, it's not really a bone. So you can find that seam with your fingers where that keel bone runs. And what you'll wanna do is, you'll wanna run your knife down both sides of that keel bone. And I'm just gonna separate it here with my fingers because you've all seen the keel bone. There's the keel bone that runs between the two breasts. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna run it on both sides of this keel bone. And if you just simply slice it there with the tip of the knife, <clears throat> and as you come down through the neck side, you can curve your knife down as it goes through the meat. And then you can almost, once you get that knife incision made, you can really pretty much just tear this by hand. You'll see that meat separate off really easily. You wanna separate it from all the bones. Again, I will take the skin off and set my breast aside. Same thing on this side. I'll start it with my knife and then I'll run down both sides, the other side of the wishbone. That's what we've got there around that neck area. And once you see that your knife has cut down through that keel bone, again, I'll run my thumb through there because at this point we are, uh, it's not really the goal to, to get a nice big piece of 
you know, usable meat off there. We just want to separate it out because we are going to cut it down, trim it down. And you are going to find, especially the first couple of times you do this, you're going to find some residual meat in this cavity here as it sits in this area here, this breastbone uh, area, these rib cage bones. And so I will simply kind of peel this rib cage meat out by hand. Uh, you're going to find a nice little chunk of meat here. This is where the um, wishbone connects to the, the keel bone. And you can take both of the, the collarbone, you can take that out. There's going to be one of those on each side. And again, I will simply remove that bone by hand, that collarbone or wishbone, separate out my meat, and then simply uh, kind of pick the rest of this out by hand. You see there's a nice thick chunk of meat that sits underneath that um, wishbone area. We'll get that out of there. Cleaning off all that rib bone, that rib cage meat. Again, you can feel that with your fingers and just peel it out with your fingers. Simple, Simon, to do. Now let's turn it over. And we talked about uh, pulling out that oyster meat. So I did that on one side. Oops, wrong pile. So here is that oyster meat. And there's, there's a piece of oyster meat on each side of this uh, backbone. And I will simply stick my fingers in there and scoop that oyster right out of there. You'll see uh, we, we already did that on the other side when we cut into the, uh, the, the leg and the thigh. So the thigh is connected back to this area. I guess that would be the hip area. But there's that nice little piece of oyster meat. Very flavorful. So the only thing that you're left at this point is you have the, the carcass of the chicken with the wings intact. Now there isn't a lot of meat on the wings, um, even though that is, you know, the most... Um, you know, right now it seems like it's one of the more desirable parts of the chicken. Um, but just like the leg and the thigh, uh, I'm going to come up underneath this wing and I am going to separate it out until I hear that pop. That pop means that you have separated that ball and socket joint right there. Again, where that wing joint is connecting to the shoulders of the chicken. And again, I'll just pull that off with my hands. This is the tip of the wing. There's no meat in it. Uh, pull my skin off of these and I'll set this aside to show you there's um, the wing joint this isn't a very good representation because it's kind of uh, not much there but there's there's two different wing joints there's the first joint the one that connects to the shoulders and then there's the second wing joint that connects to the to the wing tip there's two bones those of you that like to eat chicken wings you'll notice that there's two bones in that second joint and what you can do is just grab a hold of those two bones and clean the meat off. And then with that first bone, that first wing joint, again, I like my skin off. I'm gonna take my skin off, and then I'm simply just gonna pick that clean by hand. There really is no good way uh, to get this meat off of this. And luckily, uh, this one was roasted uh, long enough. Again, there's cartilage in that wing, which nobody likes to bite into cartilage. You kinda have to just pick through it. Pick the good meat off of it. So you get a little bit of meat off that wing. Let's see if this other wing is any better. Again, down into there. Pop that ball and socket off. Again, you can tear it with your hands. We're going to remove the tip. Here we go. That kind of shows you. Those are the different parts of the wings. We're going to take that tip off and discard it uh, with that second joint. Simply going to grab those two bones there, kind of twist them, and they'll come right out. Boom. And I'll throw that second joint meat into my meat pile. And the first joint, again, that is the wrestle. Just kind of take your skin off and wiggle it around in your hands. If the bird is still warm, uh, if you're doing this just after you get home, you're going to find that the warmer the meat is, the easier it comes off but you do have that cartilage in that first joint, which is not fun. So just kind of pick through that. There's not a lot of usable meat coming off of that wing, although it seems like it when you're at Buffalo Wild Wings and you're eating it. So at this point, all you should have is just a carcass with not uh, really hardly any meat left on it at all. 
you can take your fingers and kind of scrape around and you can dig off, you know, you, there's always a little bit of meat hanging onto the keel bone that doesn't want to come off. But that's it. So from this point, I will, I've got all my bones, this pile. Again, all your thigh bones, leg bones, wing bones, etc., and then your carcass. Um, getting ready to dice up the breasts and all the rest of the meat. But I'll take this and throw it in the trash. If you want to save these and make a nice chicken stock, absolutely great. Carcass meat is always great for uh, chicken stock. So at this point, I'm going to kind of clean things up. That is all meat. And I have my, uh, my usable meat. So I'm just going to take my breasts and dice them up. Tonight on the menu, we've got some chicken alfredo. So there we go, some nice diced up white breast meat. Get a meeting in 15 minutes. So there's my diced breast meat. Lots of good breast meat coming out of that. Take that and put that aside. And then I'm kind of gonna pick through the rest of it. And I know, so there's that uh, wing meat. That's pretty much all cut up the way I like it. Run the knife back through it to make sure that I don't have any cartilage in it. There's uh, some meat that came off the thigh. If you remember seeing that come off, we'll dice that up so that it matches. Again, this last this last pass with the knife is really good because if you've managed to pick some cartilage or some small bone fragments, this is where you will uh, uncover those. Again, just run the knife back through it very quickly. There's that other thigh. We are almost there. Going back through, now this is the, uh, this is the leg meat. Always get more leg meat and thigh meat out of these birds than what I think I should be getting. All right, so that's everything. This is a lot of chicken. So this comes off, again, this is the Sam's Club roasted chicken. They are roasting a uh, three to three and a half pound bird. And what you'll find is, uh, one of the things that my wife and I like to do is we like to buy these rotisserie chickens and then pull all the meat off. And for just the two of us, we may get three meals out of this. We'll turn this into um, barbecue chicken pizza. We'll turn it into chicken Alfredo. Just about anything where you need uh, pieces of chicken. This is a, a great application. And I don't know if you saw this, but I do use gloves whenever I handle chicken, either raw or cooked. At this point, I can take my gloves off, throw them in the garbage, and I have about uh, two pounds of ready-to-use diced chicken meat. Hope you enjoyed it.